Thank you. Now, now this time I noticed that a lot more of the women were going, yeah! <laughs> and the guys were going, uh huh, yeah, stay there. Nice to meet you, ladies. Now, and Kathy, can I ask you your, your measurement, your chest measurement? Um, uh, right now about 32, 21, 32. 32, 21, 32. Cynthia, how about yours? You might not believe it, but I'm about 37. 37. I'm broad shouldered and broad shouldered, muscular. big back. Now, do you do the two of you have a problem with women that are this large? What do you think about this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with it, but I'm glad it's not me. Oh, well, why are you glad it's not you? Um, they're beautiful girls. They're beautiful women. They really are, but. I think it's a little on the freakish side, and I think it kind of takes away from, from their what? overall beauty. Well, Crystal, now, I mean, you've been called a freak several times by other people. I've what? seen stuff, women walk up to you. What, what's the first reaction that either of you get from people out in the street? And what's the worst? Do you get worse from women or worse from men? Worse from women, I would women. say. Women, what do they do? What are some of the things that women would say to you or do to you because um, of your breast size? They'll come right up and have uh, rude comments to you. Like in, what? I don't know if I should say that on TV. <laughs> well, you can say one of them. Just tell me. I mean, how bad does it get? Well, we okay. we'll bleep you bleep if we have out. to. They, they say, that's disgusting. You just look at them and smile. You know, go on your merry way. But um, with men, it's a whole different reaction. And, and what do you get from men? men? Like, wow, wow, look at that. <laughs> wow, oh my God. <laughs> well, both of you said, wow. I just like, wait, let's find out. A, let's, let me get a couple of young ladies' reactions. What, what do you think? What do you think about Candy and Crystal's chest size? Um, I mean, if, if it's okay with them, like how they feel about it. it if, it's, like, if it's okay with them, it's all right? Yeah, see? I mean, it's... Everybody thinks differently. Yeah, yeah, see how these guys, they, you know, all, everybody's nice when the camera's on them, but as soon as the camera goes off, they'll be like, this, I think that's the most disgusting thing. Yes, ma'am. Well, are they real or silicone or what? Yeah. The real? Yeah. Have you ever thought of getting a breast reduction? Can you even, can what you exercise or? I'll, I'll get a reduction. What do you, your career, what do you do? I'm a future dancer. Oh. Travel <laughs> around and show everybody. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. It's like, it's like, oh, you're a real estate agent, huh? Well, man, you know, I've got, I've got to ask. We had another woman on the show before who was rather well endowed in the chest area, and she said to us that she was real. And then somebody told me in another place that it's impossible, that you have to have something in there to hold them up. Now, can I ask you that? Am I getting too personal? Can I ask you, no. do you have any implants in I'm there at all? I'm 19 years old, so maybe when I'm... About 30, they'll be down to my knees. <laughs> Wait, you were 19 right years old? Yeah. How, when did they start to grow like this? When I was 11. When you were 11? What was your <laughs> breast size? I didn't have any boyfriends. Tell me about it. I didn't like it either. You didn't have any boyfriends? No. You had a, old, a lot of old, lecherous men chasing you, though, right? When I was 16, my first boyfriend was twice my age because nobody my age would go out with me. And wait, what was your breast size at age 11? Oh, let's see. My first bra was a B. <laughs> I didn't have a training bra. I went from a B up to a double D, and then it just kept growing double E. <laughs> At age 16, about what size huh? were you? Uh, 16, I was a double D. Double D, but how about the measurement? 30, I don't know. 40, I 50? Didn't really measure. You didn't measure? Mm -mm. How about you, Crystal? Were you the same? Did you grow up sprouting early? I started about eight years old. Eight years old, and what and what did what would, did you look like at age eight? Um, about a B cup to a C cup, and then by the time I was in junior high school, I was about a triple F, about fifty something inches by junior high. Did you also run into the problem of not being able to find a boyfriend because they just didn't know what to do no, with you? No, they were chasing me around the playground. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I was just wondering if uh, this is hereditary. Yes. yes. Your mother and your grandmother and everyone else? My mother didn't have very big breasts. She was about a, a C cup, but on my father's side. <laughs> and what, what happened there? Your grandmother was rather large, right? Uh, my aunt your and aunt? my sisters. Do you know what their measurements were or about? Mm -hmm. My Aunt Louise is bigger than me. <laughs> is bigger than you? Yeah. Um, I was wondering, where do you get your clothes at? It's hard. <laughs> Wear big shirts and pants. That's about it. No dresses. But now you are, you are purpor not proportionally, I shouldn't say proportionally built, but you know, you are not a large, large woman. You just have very large 
Fresh. Do you, do you find everybody has the same difficulty that I'm having talking to you about this? Yeah. No, I just need to know if they have uh, back problems. Or they back problems? I have to lift my luggage. <laughs> What's that? If I have to lift my luggage, then my back will hurt. I have a hundred pound trunk, so. Do you have weight on your front? That. Oh yeah, about thirty pounds. Thirty pounds each? No, together. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's a pretty strong woman there. But now, you know, there, there are differences. Like, what happens with, with, like, you, Kathy? You know, you are, you, uh, I guess, are average size. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm average size. Um, if, I, if I gain a little bit of weight, I have been known to get bigger. I'd say the heaviest I ever was was 130 pounds, and at that point I was probably um, a th almost a 36C. But I have to really gain weight to do that, and it's very hard for me to gain weight and to keep it on. Well, now, Cynthia, in this day and age when there are a lot of women who have gone out and had breast implants, and we know all the discussions about implants and what's going on with that, but, you know, they do have safer ones, I guess, with water in them. In this day and age, it seems as if we as a society want women to get larger and larger and larger. Every time we do a show with women that have breasts anywhere near the size, our ratings go through the roof. Do you feel as if you're being pushed to do this also? No, I don't. I feel there's a big difference between we as a society and we as an entertainment culture. We, we're in Hollywood now. We're trying to, to make programs and, and films that are, are going to gain audiences. And it's a novelty item, I feel. Um, it's, it's exactly what you said. I mean, if I, if I saw these lovely ladies on the street, I would go, wow, look at that. You know, it's, it's a novelty. It's, it's, it's not, I don't think it's what people desire to, I'm sorry, but I, I don't think the guys in the audience are saying, I want my wife to be just like that. I don't They're know. There are a few guys out here who are dying. I'll tell you what, we'll talk to them as soon as we come back. We'll be back right after this. big breasts today and why the public is so fascinated by them. And now Cynthia said something before we went to break. She said a lot of people are fascinated by big breasts, but no man wants this for a wife. Stand up for a second, sir. What, what do you think? I mean, she's speaking for men. Would you would you mind if your wife had breasts that large? Uh, <clears throat> yes, I would. My wife does have rather large breasts. I love her for everything else in the world, but they're too large for me. How can they be too large for you? Explain this to me. Just personal choice, personal taste. I just don't think it's something that's for every, every man, like everything, it's not for every woman. All right, wait, let's find, is there a man in this room who would not have I, mind having a wife whose breasts were this size? Wait, I'll put my hand up. Gee, come here. Yes, sir, what do you think? I think it's beautiful, and I'd love to just bury my face in that. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> wait a minute. This guy didn't put his hand up. What do you think? No, well, I, I didn't understand the question. I, oh, I wasn't. You, I was, you were, you were too was, taken. I was too fixed. Where you coming? Wait, let, let's get, let's get to that a little closer, because I want to. I just. Come on, come on up. Step, step right on up. No, no, don't be embarrassed. Step, step right on up. I like to meet all the ladies. Meet, meet them all. Say, hey. Oh. Ooh, <laughs> step over here. Meet them all. Just say hello to every lady here. Just say hello. Step right across. Say hi. Hi. Uh, uh, say hello. Uh, it's hard not say hello. Uh, no. Very nice to meet Cynthia. Now let me let me show you exactly what he just did. He said he went like this. Hello. 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 Now wait. Answer. Answer. Turn around. Answer the question for me. Would you mind having a wife who looked like that? Definitely not. Okay. No. Uh, would you mind having a wife who looked like Cynthia? No. Why, why would I mind? I'm just wondering. Just trying to get a little preface. I, oh, I'm really man. throwing you now, haven't I? Oh, man. Okay, go ahead back and slip. I like it. All right, he likes it. Come on, on this way. I think... Can, can we get some oxygen in the house to help him out? No, well, but the point is, I guess, Cynthia, it's, it's really... Every man's... It's personal choice. That was my point. I didn't say no man wanted a wife who looked... Absolutely not. They're lovely women. Um, I'm saying it's not a universal goal. I really don't... I think the entertainment industry is trying to make it be so. Okay. Yes, sir. I have a question for the large-breasted women. Do you find uh, discrimination in the job market because of your large-breast size? Yes. Yes. Uh, 
Well, you know, in, in that, that's a good question because or, I don't want to say you were forced to be a dancer, but were you really forced to be a dancer because of this? I filed a suit against a major car company and won. <laughs> For what? What was the reason? Discrimination from my breasts. What did they do? They would not hire you? Oh, they wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> what is this? What happened? Yeah, I'm not supposed to talk about it, so I'm, okay. I'm going right. to okay. cut the uh, subject. Do you have any bodyguards or yes. anything? Yes. Yeah, there's a big dude back in the dressing room right now. <laughs> when I walked in, he was like, yeah, man, just talk to him. Don't touch him. Just talk to him. Um, that's it. Was that it? Okay. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess the, the biggest, the biggest, here I go with these words. What is the biggest problem that you face when you go out in public like this? I don't think it's a problem. Really? I mean, the, the, you, with the bodyguard, I would assume that it wouldn't be. But don't you get from, from women like Kathy, don't you get some women who might walk over and, and make a comment and say to you that, that, hey, you know, I'm just, I think you want to cover those things up or something like that? I'm always covered when I go out. Always. But you can't hide that. <laughs> that cannot be hidden. Well, like, there's, there's ladies out there who are nice, you know, not everybody's that way. The other day when I was, well, actually, I was flying here and I got off the elevator and a lady smiled at me and she goes, oh, my God, a phenomenon. She just, like, <laughs> looked at me and she smiled. She's like, oh, my God, you know, and she wasn't insulting me. She was just looking at me, you know. Okay, Don't you ever find that, I mean, I was noticing when you guys were clapping and stuff, you guys, it seemed to me that you were having a hard time. Don't you ever find that you guys can't do things that you'd wish you could do? Yeah. Yes. Do you have a hard time? Cla clap for a second. Let me see this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. See, why would we be envious of that? These <clears throat> girls are explaining how, you know, eight years old, you start to bust out. You can't even be a little girl anymore, you know? But we There's applaud this freedom. in this society. Do you feel, feel like you lost some freedom growing up? No. No. I'm you know, still you know, a kid. You know who I think really wants it? I don't think it's the men that encourage it so much as the women, as other women do. Um, I've never been really pressured from men, you know, to increase my bus size to get implants or anything, but I have from other women. Other women have said, you should do this. It would make you look so much better. I think it's that women have, have the, um, the idea that, that to be really sexy and to be considered sensual and possibly even to be considered, you know, that you have to be a good lover, you know, to be a good lover, you have to have large breasts. I think women are the ones that buy into that myth. I don't really think men do. Maybe when they're younger, I think the fascination with large breasts is when but men they are remember young mine boys. And, well, and when they're young boys and there's such an obvious difference between the sexes as women are maturing, men are going, wow, we don't have those. And then I think as they get, as they grow older, they kind of lose the fascination and it turns into appreciation. But I think women are the ones that are really stuck on that. Yes, ma'am. I want to know for you, do you just keep them big so you can have more attention from God, man? No, I do it for my job. <clears throat> I mean, I like my breasts big. I think if I ever got a reduction, it, I'll have to go through therapy because I'll feel like part of me is missing, you know? Yeah, but you know, th that's, that's a question, because I think a lot of people, that seems to be every time we've done a show like this, I get at least four questions in a row. Why don't you have them reduced? Why don't you have them reduced? As if you have to cut your natural body to conform. Do you feel as if there's pressure on you to conform just so you don't make other women feel a little bit inferior? I don't know if that's the right word or inadequate. A lot of people bring up the um, point, well, why don't you go get a reduction? You know, a lot of people give us a lot of pressure like that. You don't look good. Scars. Go get a reduction. That's the point. It's the society trying to make us all be the same. Why should we get pumped up to look more like them? Why should they get reduced to look more like us? The, there's something about our society that wants to make everybody be cookie cutter exact alike. I think it has a lot to do with how you feel about yourself too because I mean I personally if I were to see them on the street I wouldn't be mean. I wouldn't say anything because that's just plain rude. Absolutely. But I know that there are, I can see how they would say there are women who would be say something mean and be vindictive but that's those women who aren't happy with themselves and they feel they have to say something. That's just plain jealousy I wouldn't say anything because I'm happy with myself uh, yeah I was wondering um do you have boyfriends right now and what, what do they think about it uh, are you looking <laughs> <laughs> do, do either of you have boyfriends candy do you have a boyfriend um not right now I don't oh oh really no. <laughs> crystal how about you at the present time I don't well <clears throat> You may leave here with a couple. I don't know, yes, ma'am. I'm wondering, I'm, the, I'm a 36B, I don't feel much weight. Uh, do you have problems walking with all that weight in front? No. I do back bends and all kinds of stuff on stage when I dance. Doesn't. 
doesn't interfere with what I do. You know, what, you know, I think it would be kind of amazing to see you dance once for us. Would you do that? No. No. Ab she said, absolutely not. I'm just wondering, we all know that during pregnancy, oh, the God. breasts get larger. God How much been, larger can know. they get? <laughs> What, do you fear that when you might oh, have yes. children at some point? Yes, I yes. fear it. <laughs> I don't want to get pregnant. I'd hate to see what would happen. I, I couldn't sit up. I'd be laying on the floor. <laughs> I couldn't even see my baby. <laughs> Where's the dad? <laughs> something that I think is sort of important is that, like, if you do go out and get a boyfriend or something like that, is that um, do you think or would you feel that they um, love you for who you are or for what you have? And I think that's like, is referring back to the earlier question, I think that's the most important thing is for people to accept you who you are. And personally, you know, I wouldn't have a problem if I love you for who, who you were um, to marry you. And that's the problem with society, I think. I think exactly. that if he's not staring at your chest the whole time, <laughs> but, you know, I guess, he's not I, looking at your chest while he's speaking to you, you know, and all he thinks about is going into the nightclubs and seeing you dance and perform then he can love you for who you are because a lot of us have have really good personalities and we're really nice people you know they think people think you have big breasts and you have no brain or you're deaf they make rude comments to you and they think you can't hear them <laughs> you know or you can't see what they're doing well, a lot I mean, of men but, are really nice to us but every i would i would just imagine that even even a guy who's trying to to get beyond that and get to know who you are the first, when you walk in, even if you had on a sweater or a cardigan and a big sweatshirt over top, and we see how small your hips are, and, and here you are, the first thing is going to be like, how are you? And would you still give a guy a chance after yeah. that to clean up his act? Mm -hmm. When we come back, we'll talk to a psychologist who says that she can shed a little light on this matter. We'll be back right after this. Welcome now, Dr. Joy Davis, who's a noted Davidson, I'm sorry, a noted relationship and self-esteem expert and advisor for Playboy magazine. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. We've, we've been having a discussion about big breasts and small breasts, and it really isn't, isn't an adversarial discussion. It's just one about what the public thinks and what people think. What do you think about this? Well, let me try to put this in a somewhat different perspective. Let's imagine that instead of four women here, we had four men. We had two men who were very well endowed and two men who were not. And now let's take it a step further. Let's imagine that fashion dictates that men dress to reveal their endowments or lack thereof as well. So when a man walks into a restaurant or a bar or goes into the office or applies for a job, it's very apparent just how, quote, manly he is or not. Think about what kind of a reaction you would have to that scenario. You'd probably have a lot of guys who never walked out the house. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. And you'd have a lot of guys feeling very badly about themselves because they literally did not measure up. You'd have a lot of guys feeling that they were better than or more than others because they did. And suddenly, the emphasis would no longer be on what you have to offer as an individual, whether it be in the job or in a relationship, but on these sexual characteristics that have really grown out of proportion literally in the minds of the public okay now whose fault is this do you think it's it's the male version of the media that has done this or the female version of the media because the ladies have both said that they get more difficulty from women and some other women put more pressure on smaller breasted women to have breast implants whose fault is it well i think we have all been somewhat brainwashed and i think it's easy to say the media is at fault the male dominated media is at fault but i think after a while you have a vicious cycle where it's no longer so easy to determine who specifically is to blame. Certainly, advertising has a lot to do with this. There is a wait, perfect wait, wait, when you woman. say advertising, advertising. Lot, how do you figure that? Because, I mean, if you look through a lot of magazines, most models are not like Candy and Crystal. They're, they're a little bit 
I don't want to say they're flat, but they're a little flatter. No, than they're, they're, they're certainly less endowed than candy and crystal. And, and candy and crystal really are the, the far end of the spectrum. And I think what we're talking about beyond candy and crystal are women who are large within the normal range or small within the normal range and still have to deal with the same kind of discrimination and problems of self-esteem that candy and crystal do in a more obvious way. So, you know, we, we, had, we did a show on breast implants a couple months back, and we had a doctor on this show who said that this woman was born with a birth defect. This is what he said, a birth defect of small breasts. So we decided to enhance her breasts. This is what a doctor is saying. Is this what's going on? Because you're a doctor. What, yeah, what do you guys get yeah, off telling people? Yeah. They're... Well, you know, if I was making uh, $15,000 of surgery, maybe, I would hope not, maybe I'd be saying that it was a birth defect too. It's very easy to say that when you're making money off a statement like that. The reality is simply that we are all beautiful because we are who we are, and we are beautiful because we are who we are inside, not because we're a 34 or a 36 or a 44 or a 54 or a 104. Oh. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Um, this is, this is for a uh, question for any of the, the ladies up there. Um, I know, like, children and teenagers are really vicious. And, like, I was wondering, you know, you being over-breasted or under, um, how, what's sort of, like, teasing? I mean, how does that affect you? Like, do you get depressed easily or anything like that? Okay. It's going to be cruel. When I was growing up, I mean, I heard every, you know, you're a pirate's dream, sunken chest, you know, carpenter's, <laughs> carpenter's dream, girlfriend, flat as a board. I mean, I've heard of everything, and I have three sisters and my mom, and they are all very large-breasted. I just got skipped over, and, um, yeah, I put up with a lot of it during high school. I mean, I didn't even begin to develop until I was almost a senior, so I put up with it all. But see, Joy, now Kathy just said something herself and what she just explained. They're a large breast of my, my sisters and my mother, and I just got skipped over, as if she is supposed to feel inferior because... But I got long legs and the height that they didn't, so I feel, I feel yeah. like it's been more than made up for. But it's, it's as if we're all made up of a bunch of parts, and you're lucky if you get a couple of good parts. And if you don't get all the good parts, then, well, okay, I've compensated, I've got the long legs or you short legs and big breasts. That whole concept of being a matter of parts and not being a total person is really what's at issue. Yes, sir. Hi, um, I was wondering, what kind of insecurities that all of you women have? Do, I mean, uh, a damn, any Where insecurities? <laughs> is my cellulite showing? No, I mean, do you ever feel, do you ever feel a little insecure when you get ready to go out? Do you ever say, I'm not going to the mall today because I know exactly what's going to happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, huh? all the time. For all of you? No, no I have no problem going to the mall. I, huh? You know, I'm completely free. Yeah, I mean, but in your case, you were an average sized woman, mm -hmm. if you will. Do you think that there's any, I don't want to say, if, if either one of these ladies decided to go to um, the mall, I happen to date a woman who, who is a little I, on the large side, I guess, I'll say it that way. And I've had women say things to her, we've been together, and a woman has said, why don't you cover those? As if she doesn't have a right to be proud of her body. Uh, have, you know, what I, do you think? I agree with Kathy. I think it's rude to say anything unkind to any human being. Um, and I would never do that, but I, I must admit to feeling sorry for, for Candy and Crystal because I think their freedom is impaired. Yes, has Candy and Crystal ever been uh, posed nude before? Um, in fact, I got yes. a couple posters back in the back. No. <laughs> I'd like to do more, though. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, what was the question? Did you ever pose Magazines. nude before? Oh, yes. Um, Candy had said before that she wanted to keep her breasts because for her job. Mm -hmm. um, don't you think if you got a breast reduction, you would have many more options? Like, Oh, yeah, I could, maybe I could get on Cosmo, seeing how they discriminate. You know, have you ever seen a well-endowed woman on the top of Vogue? Oh, you mean she needs to go look for another job? Yeah. Well, why can't she have the job that she has? Well, wouldn't she? I love my job. I have so much fun. I get to travel all over the world, and uh, you know, I what else? There's what else would I want to do? That job. What happens when you get older? There's strippers that are 50, 50 and above. <laughs> well, you know, you know the problem, I get to go to the Bahamas, <laughs> Hawaii, Tokyo. I get to travel across had, the world and, you know. We had a young lady, time. you just said there's a shelf life to that job. There may be, but we had a young lady on our show who, within the next two years, will retire making a lot more money than I'm making from her retirement from what she saved by having breasts this size. I mean, that's, and she's now 23 years old. She'll retire by age 24. Yes, both of you are really well-shaped. 
And I'm wondering if how your ca cardiovascular exercises affect you guys. I mean, does it? Do you guys have problems? No, I do 45 minutes to an hour on a stair climber, three times a week. It's a little harder, but <laughs> higher, easier. more of a workout. Hi, I really applaud you because you feel really comfortable with yourself. But I just wanted to ask: Do you have trouble breathing? Because you, you, it, it looks like you you breathe really heavy though. Well, my back's kind of tired. This is the longest I've sat up straight in a long time. <laughs> well, but th <laughs> there, is, there like was the point. Exactly. That physically, she has limitations because of the size of her breasts. And, and that isn't her fault. And it's easy to say, again, we'll go get a reduction. But she's turned what could be a liability and is a liability in some respects into an asset. Scars. There's a, but there's, there's a flip side to that. There's so yes. much that could happen having a reduction, infections. Mm -hmm lopsided scarring what kind of man wants to look at me after having scars they cut you here around all over you know i i would feel ugly if i had scars on my breasts just like anybody else would do you guys dress like this every day or you just did this for the show um, just for the show for the well, this show. is what you this also wear in the act, right? attire we use in the act yes okay we have to take a break and we'll be back right after this talking about big breasts, small breasts, what it's like to have either or, and I just had to do this because this is Robert Andrade, our stage manager, and his wife, and she's never been on camera, so don't you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. It's regarding um, sex. Ooh, let's is talk about sex, right. baby. <laughs> <laughs> do they seem to interfere? Yeah, I wear a bra when I have sex. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I love the freedom again. What am I saying? Well, but Candy, now you, you had a question. She yeah, next. you know, looking at her, she doesn't have small breasts. She has medium breasts. And look at her shirt. I could never wear a shirt like that. If I wore a shirt like that, everybody would be staring at me and would not leave me alone. Do you get that? In that um, shirt? Watch out how you answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not when she's with him. <laughs> well, I've told my husband many, many of times that uh, I feel that I am somewhat small. Oh, wait, uh, that's so would, just you, my would you consider small. having breast implants? Um, yes, if it was safe. Wow. But it's no. not safe. I mean, it's, it's not. It's been proven that it's not, and I can see that, that they're large naturally, and that's fine, and I, th and I you know, commend them for, for making money out of it. Um, oh. but, but I think that, um, well, what are they going to do? I'm, you know, work at Winchell's. I mean, they're, you know, if that's what they want to do, if they want to make money out of something that they're gifted with, and if they want to retire early, and she already said that she's going to, you know, get her breasts re reduced when she's, when she wants to end her career. But, um... Well, I mean, what's no, the point? Should they... I mean, it's not safe, and I no, don't see why, why knowing what, what a woman knows now about how unsafe it is, why a woman would willingly undergo those risks. It's just, it's, it's now, suicide. Dr. Davidson, though, let me because... jump over here for a second. Now, we know that the silicone implants are unsafe, right. but we don't know about the, we don't the know, saline solution. We don't know about the saline. However, any time you undergo surgery, Cynthia is right. Risk. There is a risk. There's a, a risk with the anesthesia, with the, with the infection. There's all kinds of risks, but women will do do it because they don't feel good enough, they don't feel, quote, feminine enough, they don't feel desirable enough, unless they have a breast size that they feel men will want. Personally, I think for me, because I'm not exactly as big as you guys are, so to me it's embarrassing to walk next to you. I mean, I won't feel, I don't feel like a woman. I mean, I'm standing there, I'm like, I feel like a guy around you guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. To me, it's like... I'm sorry that you feel no, that way. No, yeah. that's my own problem. It is. I've personally, I mean, to be honest, I've been affected just being, I mean, all my friends are huge compared to me, and it's, it's embarrassing, and it's hard. Have you seen with us? No, no, it's, it's embarrassing for me because I'm small. What if tonight we set you up with an opportunity just to go to lunch or dinner with these two ladies, and you just sat with them kind of like their buddy at a table, and the three of you sat together, would you be embarrassed to sit at a table with them? I'd stuff myself or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's very honest. He's very honest. Here we go again with this 
inadequacy. I Why does it have to be inadequate? And competition. There's a tremendous amount of competition among women because we are brought up to believe that we have to compete with each other for a man. I mean, that is the basic tenet of our upbringing and our education. And whatever arena we have to compete in, we will do it. And if that means having surgery, if that means having liposuction and breast augmentation and whatever else, nose jobs, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's for the guy. And I believe that it's the society that determines the, where the competition is going to take place. Our society, for some reason, has decided that it has to be breasts. In Brazil, the number one or number two operation for cosmetic surgery is breast reduction. It's the style in Brazil to have small breasts and firm buttocks. So you get liposuction and you get breast reduction. It's, it's a society dictating what is going to be beautiful and that's I wrong. I think we forget about the men too. The men who are out there getting pec implants in their chest to have a bigger chest. You know, it's, I think it's men it's look at us because there are women who have small breasts and we're more of a minority. And it's just like a thing, you know? The, women look at men with big chests and big bodybuilders, you know? We look at them and go, wow. But it is not as, necessarily it as much we want to be with them. Component. We wouldn't be ashamed yeah. to be seen with them. Maybe that's not our type, but we look at it and we say, that's, that looks good, you know? And I think that's... People need to realize that maybe men don't really want us, but maybe they enjoy looking at our bodies because they can't go out and see it everywhere else. Question to the two ladies that are well endowed. Does it enhance uh, your sexual life or when you have sex with a partner to be bigger? I think it does. Yes. I more mean, sensitive. <laughs> they're much more sensitive? Yeah. No way. That's totally, it can't be true. Well, oh, yeah. well wait, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. So they're like, let me just, let me find out. Let's take a break. I'll find out if it's more sensitive or not. Talking about big breasts and smaller breasts, and before we go any further, I want you to know you don't have to write a letter. No, I did not attempt to do anything that these ladies don't break. Now that we're back, but you know, Kathy and Cynthia, both of you said yes, you have boyfriends and you have a lot of them. And for the two of you, you don't have one now. Do you find it much more difficult to get a date? I mean, and to hold yes. a guy because they don't want to talk to you. They, I think they get scared. You know, I they know. see you have big breasts and they think you're a monster or something. But, <laughs> you but, know. Do you, do you also get it from the other way where a guy just wants to be with you for that one night yeah. just to see if he can touch him and then that's it? Yeah. yeah. There's, look at her now. Ask her a few questions. So you did that. <laughs> you, you know what? You did that. And on camera, I went like this. <laughs> that's right. I was going to ask you, when you lay down to go to sleep, do you have to prop your backs up so that you don't suffocate yourself? Two under my stomach and one, and one under each arm. So I sleep on my stomach. You yeah, I put two pillows stomach? under my stomach and then one under each arm. I cannot imagine what that would be. I know. It's like sleeping in trash. See, a lot you of women like cut us down and bitch about us having big boobs, but just think, I would love to go maybe a couple weeks with no boobs, you know? That would be really great. I could wear any clothes that I want. I could do whatever I want. I could swim, drive my car right. I mean, imagine trying to do turns, a U-turn. It's like this, <laughs> you know? But now, no, Candy, you said it, it gets in the way when you have sex. And Crystal, you say you think it kind oh, of enhances. Yeah. Now, tell me how it enhances your sex life. I think it's more creative. I it's, mean, yeah, I think it's more so creative? Because you have to think of a way to, that you can get together. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's not in the way because I'm used to them. See, and I you? know how to handle myself and handle them. And I think for your partner, it's funner for your partner because there's just yeah. more there to play with. See, you misunderstood me. <laughs> I think. Joy, you're shaking your head like this. Fun, like, no, no, come on. I mean, well, you know, there is a little bit more there to play with. There is, there is more there to play with, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be necessarily more fun. I mean, it has a lot to do with the kind of relationship you There's have with things somebody. You, you can always find a lot to play with. <laughs> I wish I had a dollar for every time a guy has said to me, more than a handful is a waste. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, but you know what? The same guy that looked her in the face and said, more than a handful seconds. is a waste. We'll be standing in front of her shell going like this. I'm going to have more than a handful. <laughs> I was just wondering, I mean, uh, I'm asking uh, the wholesome, too. Um, <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. Right up front, right up 
front, you have to, when you, when you make comments like that, you can't do it from a distance, because I want to know, now when you say, when you say, here, slide over this for a little bit, which two are wholesome and which two are not? Well, I mean, okay, well, first I was No, 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 which two were you referring to as being wholesome? These two. These two are wholesome. Well, I was just... Oh, you know, that's really kind of odd, isn't it? I oh, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, okay. I, well, what I was going to say is, do you guys have any special diet? Because I imagine, you know, cutting a steak, would that be pretty tough? I mean, do you have a diet that you... <laughs> do you have a specific diet that you're on? I eat or? a lot of cantaloupes. You know, like, <laughs> now, now, Cynthia, because he's referred to you as not being wholesome, would you like to hit him with the chair or the spike? Or? Yeah, we have makings of a lynching here. <laughs> <laughs> We were yeah, more wholesome, more wholesome, more wholesome like that. Yeah, that's American. what wholesome and usually means. Right, well, I don't know. You, I, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, too close, huh? Go ahead, sit down. Yeah. Well, we have to take a break. We'll be back right after this. about breast size and you had a question. I just want to direct a question to the lady in the green. It seems to me that you're a bit jealous of these women because you keep making sort of derogatory comments about their breasts. Let me finish. And you mentioned about different things about they couldn't have sex right because of their breasts and, and everything. Their sensitivity could not and possibly be the same. I think that's wrong because you should look at them on the way they act inside, they all seem to be very nice women and everything, and just... Oh, that's what I've said. Yeah, but it seems to me you're just, I don't no, know. I'm disagreeing because I, I don't know how, I mean, personally speaking, I don't know how other people's breasts could possibly be more sensitive because I know what my own experience is. But that's a hard question because it's like saying, I don't know what it's like for men, men it's to, hard have, to take you know. a shower sometimes. Exactly. Well, you I, can't get everything. Kind of I comes I, around. It's like and and turn the other way. As these ladies are. I I don't envy them at all because of exactly the problems they've been describing all day. But I, it's I, fun. You know. It's fun. Wait, we, we can't hear you without a microphone on you. But you know what? You have been describing problems. Yeah. But you know, Candy and Crystal, there are some good times oh, with yeah. this. Is that right? Oh yes. I Tell think us about the good, the good times. The good That's times right. outweigh the bad times. We have a wonderful life. We have a, a wonderful career. Uh, we really enjoy what we're doing. Uh, the attention is fun. It can get to be a bit much at times, but it's fun to get lots of attention. It's fun. I think we need to just quit judging people on the way they look and judge them on who they are and what they do. Well, that's, that's an interesting point. She said, judge you on who you are and what you do. And I have yet to hear one woman in this audience say anything, and I'm not trying to, to start a fight, but anything against the fact that you do take your clothes off. You are professional strippers. And I think in, in other shows that we've done about professional strippers, people are ready to say, you shouldn't be stripping, this is 1992, a woman should not be denigrated that way, we shouldn't have to, you know? Do you ever get that kind of I'd a thing? I'd like to say it's not degrading at all. I mean, I'm not going on stage. People are not touching me. If somebody touches me, they get thrown out of the club. I go up there, I put an act on, fire shows, um, cowgirl acts. I have a lot of fun in my shows, you know, and it makes a lot of people laugh. And they have a good time. You know, I'd like to say that um, I don't refer to myself as a stripper. I'm a feature entertainer. Okay. And, and you do, you're featured in a club where other women take their clothes off? With mm -hmm. other strippers. With I'm other a stri feature entertainer. But we have, you're the feature act. Of course we have shows. We go up there and we put a show on for 20 minutes. Is, Joy, you were going to say yes, something? you know, there are a lot of people in my profession who would say that these women are willing to let themselves be abused in this industry. That the industry that they're in, the sex industry, is an abusive industry by the very nature of it and that they are being exploited. You let it be. I, th I think that what's so important here and what we're hearing is that these women are in control of their lives and they're making decisions that work for them and they should be applauded for that. Yes. Okay. For the women who base their careers on their breasts, what if you get breast cancer and you and you only have like one left and you have nothing to fall back on? I mean, if you I get save breast my cancer, money. I make wise investments. Saving your money and making wise investments? Um, That's the key. Are you doing? I would ask them a question. What What would you do for a living if your breasts weren't as big? I'd be working for my father. 
My father has his own uh, firearms manufacturing company, and that's what I'd be doing. I mean, he would <laughs> be an answer anyway. But oh, should, is, there, is there something wrong with them taking advantage of their no, opportunity? not at all, not at all. But I'm just curious that if this is something that they're um, cashing in on because they have large breasts or if they just would do it anyways. No. I don't know what I would do, but in my situation, uh, this is the best thing for me. Everybody's got something that's good for them. This Obviously, is the best thing for you. This is the best I've got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. for guests of the Montel Williams Show are provided by the Sheraton Los Angeles Airport, the most convenient airport hotel in Los Angeles. Big breast or small breast, it, it, I don't know if it's really important. What's really important is what's inside, and I think all of our ladies have proved that what's inside is very good. I want to thank them all, Candy, Crystal, Kathy, Cynthia, Dr. Davis, and join us again on the next Montel Williams Show. Viacom.